Okay, I think I'm live. I'm waiting on YouTube to catch up. There we go. So I've done a little more on the blue heron than I probably should have, but I didn't really want to wait because I was excited. Because I love how it's turning out. And I like how my water's showing up better than what it shows in the pattern. Can you hear me okay? So I've got a couple of other sections set out as well besides C. Uh, Karen is doing hers the way the pattern says and since Karen has never you've never paper pieced before correct it probably doesn't mess, mess with your head as much as it did with mine. Hello Gladys. Um, Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Um, I'm going to do C. All right, let me switch the cameras again. There's my mouse. Okay, so I'm going to do section C today. And since there's just a few pieces on it, we might be able to do K. I don't know that we'll get to L because L is quite complex. I have already finished D, E, F, G, and M. Uh, they're not sewn together up there on that. The only one sewn, let me show you. I need something to point. I don't want to touch because I'll knock that over because it's precariously stood up there. So the only ones sewn are right here. These here. These pieces here. These are all sewn together. This is not sewn to anything. Um, I cannot sew this to here until I get all of this over here done. And that goes... Let's see. I'd have to get all of this done and then all of this bottom piece here done. R is the last thing to go on. H, I, and J have to go on to this section here. And then K through Q goes over here and then finally R will go in this bottom corner over here. Thank you, Linda. So the way that Karen is doing it um, is a little strange for me. Hello, Nancy. Thank you. Um, for the directions, she actually wanted you to sew two pieces together. So you would say you would sew, let me get on my other camera. So you would sew, say, these pieces together, right? Then you would take a piece and you would have it fabric right side up, which is different than what you normally do um, for paper piecing. She calls it the new way of paper piecing. Well, I didn't care for it. Because what you would do once you did that, you've got your fabric right side up, it's gonna face your freezer paper. You'd sew those seams together, and then you would lay your piece on there with those two corresponding pieces of fabric okay 
and then you would cut a quarter of an inch around it. Well, then that puts the wrong side of your fabric on the other side of this paper. And then when you go to put them together, you would be putting the papers face to face so that you could sew the wrong side. Well, the problem I found with that, you're putting it face to face, and when you go to sew, you can no longer see that freezer paper. You have to constantly look to make sure you're lined up with that freezer paper because nobody's perfect on their quarter inch seams but if you can sew along that freezer paper right then you know you'll be good regardless of how much you have over here so i chose after three tries because i got really aggravated after my live the last time i chose to do it the way i know how to do it and not the way she suggested doing it so I had cut up all of the freezer paper that I had printed out. Well, I had cut it up wrong. Okay. So, it's a good thing I had a second copy, isn't it? And let's go back over to that for a minute. So, mine is facing the opposite of what this pattern shows. You can see in my little image there on the screen. Karen's is facing the same direction as the one on the screen. Karen, do you mind if I show yours? Hers is beautiful too. I'm not going to show it unless you say I can. <clears throat> so Karen's is facing okay Karen's is facing the same direction that the pattern is now she's so very brave she's just learning to make quilts and if I'm if I'm correct this is your very first paper piece project, isn't it? Is that correct? I will. Is that correct? This is your very first paper piecing project? Anyway, I believe it is. Yes. Okay. This is a very hard paper piecing project. And she's following this woman's directions. Um, and it's different. So it's probably easier for her than me because uh, it just doesn't make sense. Because it to me, she's making you do extra work. So let me show Karen's. Nope, let's get in the camera. Let me turn this light off. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I need to hold it in front of the other camera. Hold on. There we go. That's Karen's. Now she's she's doing hers the way that the instructions say, which is very difficult. Hello, Marla. And hers is turning out beautiful. I can't wait to see more of it. So I think if I hadn't already done paper piecing, I wouldn't have such a hard time trying to do it her way. But since I've already done paper piecing, I just, yeah. 
for her first time, it's amazing, isn't it? Just amazing. I can't wait to see the rest of her fabrics in it. So today, we're going to um, work on C, which is what I have here. Now, I was going to cut it apart, but I don't think I have to. I think that I can fold one and get two in there and get three, four, and then put five on. So this one's not going to need to be cut apart like the rest of these. So... That's what I'm going to do. And since I'm not using the freezer paper, I'm using paper. I'm also using Elmer School Glue. Washable. To hold my pieces in place. So we're going to start with some background fabric. For one. Well, first I need to bend my paper. get all these bent in place that way it'll be easier if i have to bend them again i will and some of the pieces on this are so small it's unbelievable how small they are but if it gets the desired effect so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put some glue on number one and I don't have the camera at my sewing machine this time. I thought I would have it up there at the blue hair and, and what I've got done on it. Well, I guess I should have left it how I had it. Try and get a quarter of an inch, at least, all the way around that piece. I'm going to press it down so it doesn't come undone. And then number two is right here, and that is B4. So we'll go over and fold. And then I'm going to cut my quarter of an inch. And I've even been saving some of these small ones because, like I said, there are some very small pieces. I'm actually going to cut this way a quarter of an inch. That one just made it in there. It's all right. And this way, quarter of an inch. I'm going to go a little more because that paper looks like it sticks out a little bit. And now I need B4. And I have all my fabrics lined up. One through five on my ironing mat. Then my background, and then the water one and two. And as long as I keep them in order, I'll know which one is which. So I need B4, just this one, and I'm going to try and make sure we get enough fabric for a quarter of an inch. And I'll sew from here. And off but I don't have my camera over here this time because it's showing the blue heron instead And we're going to fold that over. This is a little bitty piece, too. 
And then we're going to put a little glue on number on that next section. Because right between my fingers, that is the section I just sewed on. That little bitty section there. I'm going to press it real quick. Cut my quarter inch. And then I'm going to fold it on this. No. I'm going to fold it on line for the third piece. Just like that. Cut another quarter of an inch. Like this. And then the third section is the background fabric again. That piece there should cover it. Here I have a quarter of an inch. Now, cover that point down there. There we go. Sometimes just turning the odd shaped fabric a different direction will get it covered now this section goes up on the very top part of the blue heron I'm going to put glue on that and flip it over and then press it. And then I'm going to cut all this at a quarter of an inch. Get your ruler straight. And then we need a big piece of this, so I'm going to have to cut more because that's a good size piece. That is a big, big piece. Now, here's the decision. There is a mess up right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there. In the fabric. So, I'm going to try not to use that part of it. Because I don't want a big blob like that. And that was in their printing process. So, let's see. That's a, this is a big piece here. Let's see how much I'm going to need. So we're just going to, we're going to cut here. And then... Get back on there. I'm going to cut down here. Cut a little further than what I cut down. Get 
just fold it back up. Looks like there's a couple places that have those big blotches. I'll try and keep those out of my out of my pattern. Don't really want the big blotches. And I know that leaves can, you know, be all gathered up like that. Right? Um, but I just don't want it in my pattern. All right. Let's get this lined up here. So that needs a quarter of an inch. And we're going to sew it right there. That should cover everything. But I know that in nature you have that thing, but, um, when it's not meant to be on the fabric, it kind of st stood out like a sore thumb. All right, I'm going to put some glue on that and press that down. Just so it stays put. kind of hard because my ironing board is covered with stuff. Doesn't give me much room for anything. I guess it would have helped if I'd had a little table or something set next to me for these. It looks like that's all there was for C. And I will, oh, I'm on the half inch, I want the quarter inch. I'll attach it to that top piece if I can do it without knocking my whole thing over. I've got my big ruler holding that, that up. My luck, I'll knock everything over. And then these can still be used in other parts of the background. I was hoping that if I put my mic on that you guys wouldn't have to turn your devices way up because I noticed when I had to, when I was trying to watch mine, um, I had to turn the device up. So this big section here, oh, well, I don't sew on the paper, Marla. Um, when I sew, I sew next to the line because I don't like to rip paper off. So all of this paper, when I get ready to take it off, it'll all come off in however many big pieces. You can sew on the line, but I don't. I sew right next to it. And when I sew right next to that line, it's just like sewing on the line because I have folded the paper just before the line so my stitches land on the line so this piece i just did goes up here let's try not to knock this over yep yep nope stay It 
it is a precarious thing going on over here. Big two foot ruler trying to hold up a design board so that you guys can see it. Hold on. Having issues. Try this again. Get my weight over here to keep it from moving. There we go. Three pound weight. Works wonders, right? All right. Hello, Ashley. How are you? Thank you, dear. I appreciate it. So, the piece I just took down... Right here. This here goes next to it. Right here. It's where this one goes. So what I want to do. I'm not so concerned. With these outside edges. Because I can always trim them up. Right. Um, I'm more concerned with it lining up. With this part of this bird's head because this fabric is ash actually right here and right here no that's the darkest but it is right here so i want this to line up there so i'm going to make sure that this which is right here lines up you see she's got a circle on here so i'm going to put my pin straight through at the edge of that circle now, there should be a circle over here. Well, you're not going to be able to see it. So, what I'm going to do, since I can't see it because there's so many seams, I'm actually, I'm going to pin right next to that. Because I want this, which is going to be right here. I want this to line up. So I'm going to line it up with the back of him here. And I'm going to stick my pin in about a quarter of an inch in because that's where I'm at on here. And that should line up the part on his head. And I'll keep it straight, right? That should also bring me, nope. Not going to bring me down there. Let me lay him out again and see where it's landing. Because that's not bringing me where I need to be. It needs to be I need to move my pin up Let's see if I can put a fold here mark where I need to be right there that's where I'm gonna stick my pin and I'm gonna line it up can you see I'm gonna line it up with this I'm going to take my pin out and go back in where I folded it. Right there. And then I'm going to line it up with this seam here. That should hopefully line all my other stuff up as well. I want to make sure I keep it straight. Now I'm too far. Let's see where let's see where it goes when I open it. Cause I don't want to re-sew it four times like I did the top of his head. Have a great weekend, Ashley. Thank you for stopping in. Yeah, see, that's moving it down too far. Because I think, let's look at the picture. Uh, 
Yeah, it's got to go up some. Because these aren't any fun to take apart, right? I think what I'm going to do is fold over my quarter inch. We're going to scoot up a little bit more. See if we can line up this bottom and see if that gets it where it needs to be and not worry about the top. Line it up in the same spot as I have over here. Because the last time I ended up having to line up. Nope, I moved off of this one. I had to line it up four times. I, I took the stitches out four times for the top of his head. And I don't want to do that again. So, we're going to put that pin right there. I know the tops don't match. The bottoms do. And let's see where my colors match. Where's that picture? I'm going to say that's pretty darn close, right where that's at. I don't know if you ladies can see it. The colors are so dark, but it's got a little hump. And if I'm looking at hers, she has a little hump there too, but it's coming into this and then this is flowing down like it should coming off the back of the head and here like it's supposed to I can't see from that stupid little heart my top was what well yeah I had to redo my top four times Karen all right so I'm gonna leave this pin right here I don't care about the top because as you can see my top is extending past I don't care about that even my paper is because I'll square it up when I'm done and I'm gonna leave my pin straight up and down you see in that Karen straight up and down because if I turn it, it's going to move my fabric, and I don't want it to move, okay? So I'm going to hold it there while I take it to the sewing machine and drop my foot and get a few stitches in it before I ever take that pin out because I don't want my fabric moving on me. There's a lot of seams right here. Now I'm pushing everything out of the way there. There we go. There we go. Okay, fingers crossed, ladies. We don't need to see Jack the Ripper. Fold that back. And I think I'm okay with that. You can see where that's back this way. Can you see where it's lined up here? Right here? Probably not. See if that. That probably didn't help. I made it wuss. So it, it goes here, 
and then comes here, and I think I'm okay with that. And then his little point comes out like is on there. So I'm going to give that a press. I can get everything to stay where I put it. I'm going to give that a press to make sure it all lays down good. And then we'll try and clip it back up on there without knocking everything over. Thank you, Karen. We're going to try and do this. This is precarious again. Now, when I get here, I'm going to do the same thing, Karen. I'm going to line up this. I want this to line up. I'm not worried about all of this over here. I want this to line up because that's a continuation of his chest. So I want to make sure all of that lines up. Same thing here. This here should line up as well. So far, I've not knocked it off. There. Now I'm not going to touch it no more. Shall we do another one? What do we have? We have L and M. No, I already did M. M is up on the board. How about I start with cutting up L? We'll do K afterwards. All right. So I'm going to cut on all these dotted lines. I'm going to look where I can cut from edge to edge first. And I'm going to cut from edge to edge on the dotted line. It's going to give me a gazillion pieces from the looks of it. And I just lay it. Whoops. This one here has got a bunch. Come on, camera. At uh, it's uh, either way, anyway. So L up here section, it can come off. Yeah, it looks better on the big screen. On this little screen in front of me, I can't hardly see anything. It looks too bright. Set, set that off. What's next? This one here. Edge to edge. I have to catch myself because I keep thinking, why is there another one to cut? That's my quarter inch line on my ruler that is dotted just like the dotted line I'm cutting on. So this one actually has two more subcuts in it. We'll cut all those dotted lines apart. And this one. So when you're putting them together, Karen, follow the numbers. So one, two, do them in sequence. Okay. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you are. Okay. I don't have another edge to edge. Dotted line. In order to get to these other edge-to-edge -edge dotted lines, I have to cut this piece off here. And I need to cut this piece off here. Because it will go on after all of these are put back together. And so will this one. So, 
Let's take 40 off. And I do my best not to lose these because as you can see on my inch mark on my board, it is not quite two inches long and about a half an inch thick. So they're not very big. Try not to lose those because they're important. Now let's cut 19 off. So I can get to another edge to edge dotted line. So this one here, dotted line. Just so many pieces. This one here goes to edge to edge. And then here, I might have to study this one, see if it can actually be done the way it's, the way it is, or if it's going to have to be separated, but, because there's a lot of pieces in that. And then this one. It is like a puzzle. And one more. All right. Now this one will be easy because it's here, here, and then here. 23, 24, 25. This one will be easy. These two will be easy because we just need to lay it on the fabric and make sure I have a quarter of an inch all the way around. Let's do those two first. So I need B2 for both of them. And I'm going to glue them. Maybe. over make sure I have at least a quarter I try to give it a little more and I'll just trim it off and then this one as well These little ones, I'm going to have to press them on just to make sure they don't come off of the fabric. All right. A quarter inch here and I like to come out at least a quarter past when I cut them like this I'm gonna at least a quarter then I can flip that back and cut my next one just like just like that And then cut that. And then I'll go a quarter of an inch from the tip here.
and add a quarter of an inch from this tip. So that piece number 40 is ready. Now finish piece 19. A quarter of an inch here. Actually, I'm going to do my quarter inch here first. So I don't have to cut all the way down into this fabric. I can get it back out of the way. I'm going to stand my glue on it to hold it. So that can be put over here. Make sure I get that one quarter of an inch. And then once I do that, these two pieces will be ready to be sewn into their position. I won't have to do anything else. Quarter inch here. And in some spots I don't I don't mind if it's a little shy or short of a seam because as long as I can see it I and get a stitch across, I'm okay with it. Because once it's all together, it's not going anywhere. Okay, 19's done. Let's look at this one. So it's having you three to four. Then add in five, then add six and seven, then eight, then nine, then ten. Okay, that is doable. So we don't have to cut it apart. Have you done one like this yet, Karen? If you have, did you cut it all apart because of all the seams? Well, the way she has you doing it, I don't know. I would probably cut three and four out, six and seven out. If she's having you sew the fabrics together right, have five, eight, nine, and ten all individual pieces like I just did here. So look at it and see if in the way that she's got you doing it, which is very difficult way, um, you may have to cut yours down more. This one I can do just like it is. So I'm going to do my folding because I'm going to start with this little piece here. This is on section L, Karen, if you've got them in front of you. So um, three and four is the one I'm working on. I know I'm out of order. But I wanted to see if it could be done or if I was going to have to cut it apart. So I'm just going to put my folds in between three and four, between four and five. Just going to do all my folds. Seven's another itty bitty piece. Do eight. Do ten. Do nine. All right. So I want glue on this section right here. And that is B4. That's this one. Make sure. I've got a quarter of an inch everywhere. I'm going to set it with the iron. 
since it's such a small piece, I don't want it moving. I'm actually going to cut my quarter inch seam so I can get rid of some of this fabric. Quarter inch this way. Now, my next one is B3. So I'll cut that one too. I think I'm probably going to have to turn that overhead light back on. B3, how big is that? Oh, it's a pretty good size piece. Bye, Marla. Stay warm and safe. How far are we going for? Over there. Go back. Now I'll put some glue on four before I iron it, so it'll stay once I do. Excuse me. What I do wrong here? No, I didn't. I'm good. Alright, now I'm going to cut my quarter inch here. And then, for five, which is going to be B5. I'll trim my quarter inch here. <coughs> B5. Which is this little guy. I'm holding it up here so I can kind of see. I want to make sure I've got a quarter of an inch at either end as well as coverage.
think this is probably part of the wing. It is the top part of that wing. All right, let's glue on five. That little guy. Really quiet in the chat. Well, there's not very many of you, so that's okay. It's quality, not quantity. Cut my quarter inch here. Guess I could have cut my quarter here first. Your scissors out of the way, woman. Might be usable. All right, number six. Maybe a quarter inch cut here. And we need B5 again. Okay. You say so. I just cut B5 off of there, but it's okay. See if that'll cover. Nope. It won't. Oh, maybe it will. I was looking at the wrong line. It will. All right. Need to go to here, not down here. Flip that over. Give it a press. Oh, let's put glue on five first. Or numbers. Number six. Losing track. Put some glue on number six first. Right there. Iron will set that glue so it won't come undone while I'm working on this. Now, cut off my quarters again. Cut this quarter. I know I'm not throwing it on the floor. Uh, I have a trash can. Piper thinks it's her trash can and tries to get all the scraps of fabric out. Mom swears she's wanting to make her own dog bed. I think she's just being a brat. They should be chewing on something and you'll make her open her mouth. B2. And it turns out it's a big wad of fabric. Like she's got a big honk of chew in her mouth and it's fabric. Let's see. Can I do it? No. No. Yes. Maybe. Uh, that's going to be kind of close. I'm not going to have enough for the quarter inch. They're very small, aren't they, Linda? 
And um, you certainly cannot or should not follow her directions if you already know how to pay for peace. Karen, on the other hand, didn't know how, and she's following her instructions, which I think um, is more work than what should be. Yeah, they're they're pretty tiny. But it's going to be beautiful when it's done, right? Give that a press. That's where my little um board I made comes in handy when I'm trying to lay these out flat and they don't want to lay flat and I heat it up and put my board on it. But as you can see, it doesn't have to be done according to her directions. I'm doing it the way I know how to paper piece. And I would be using freezer paper if somebody hadn't cut it up wrong. Talking about me. Could blame Piper, but she doesn't know how to use scissors or rotary cutters. Alright, that was number seven. So now we need to do this one, which is B5 again. Which is this. Makes me want to skip that. And do it here and then do B2 because it's already here. You know what I mean? Because it's already there. And this seam right here. There's going to be a seam right here. Let's see if I can fold it. There's going to be a seam right here for another color. You did? So did you try printing it with your printer? There's a trick to it. You have to, you can either, which I've never tried, I've heard you can tape it to paper or cardstock. I use cardstock. Or you can press it to the cardstock. But to get it off of the cardstock, you need to heat it back up to peel it off the cardstock without tearing the cardstock. So I think this just may care. You don't have to. But I've already got, this is fabric B5. Right? So, 6 and 7 have already been done. My next step is 8, which is B5, which is this fabric. The next section to cut and add is right here, which is another section of B5. And then a section of B2 right here. So I'm going to skip number 8. I'm not going to put another seam in there because there's fabric already there. Okay? And I'm going to... I'm going to go on to number 9, which is another piece of B5. But what's there isn't enough to cover it. So, skipping number 8. So, we're going to glue 8 down. Because to me, since it's already there, 
it doesn't need to be another seam right there. And I'm going to do number nine. And I'm going to trim my quarter inch seam. It's a little generous, but I'm trimming it there anyway. I'm going to get fabric B5 again, which is this again. And I'm going to make sure it covers. Sew it on. And I don't think it's going to be that much of a difference since it's the same fabric. It's just not going to have a seam. And I'm okay with that. And it's my bud and I'll do what I want to. Okay. That's one less piece I had to do, honestly. All right, so let's glue nine down and give it a press before I trim. Been on over an hour already. Wow. All right. Let's give it a trim here. I'm going to trim here our quarter inch. And I'm going to flip number 10 back. Give it another trim. And that one is B2. This here should cover that. Yeah, maybe one of these will. Gonna be enough for a quarter and all the things. No. What about that one? That one will. All right. Quarter inch in. I got to be careful. I keep hitting my knee on my steel table, desk leg, sewing machine table leg, whatever. It's a desk. I converted to uh, hold my sewing machine. Cut a hole in the top. Put a uh, Bracket down. Where I can adjust my sewing machine. Here we go. Let's put some glue on that. Finger press it real good and then get it under the iron. So it stays put. Ouch. That was a little hot. Do my quarter inch trim. There's my quarter inch trim. There's that piece. And that's how that one turned out. Now, mind you, all of this is seam allowance here. And a quarter of an inch there is all seam allowance. But see, I don't have an extra seam in there because, well, I didn't feel I needed to put an extra seam right there. Is that the right spot? Yeah, I would have had an extra seam there. 
but I chose not to since I already had that same fabric there. It'll be fine. Alright. Well, I think I'm going to get off of here, ladies. This will take me another two hours to put all these together. And, uh, unless you'd like me to sew a couple more. So quiet in chat. So would you like me to sew one or two more? If not, I think I'm going to call it. I just didn't know if it was just, it's repetitive, maybe boring. I think I'm going to go ahead and end it for now. I'm not sure which section will be next. Because I kind of like doing it off camera. Uh, I'm hoping some of the... Okay. Um, I'm hoping some of it helps somebody. Um... You can always call me or message me too, Karen. I may wait and, uh, I don't know if I'll do another live next Saturday. Okay. Um, you'll know if I schedule one or not. I might have, by Saturday, I might have all of them done. Uh, I'm planning on maybe some new york beauties to go around it which is also paper piecing um just uh four of the blocks we'll see i haven't decided yet so everybody have a good night and i'll see you all next weekend maybe i'll let you know bye